You know what this is? What's this? It's the final episode of the year. It is. It is. We, what we, good year it's been. It's been a fantastic year. Quick year. I feel like... We say that. I think we say that to each other, and uh, I think everybody experiences that. I feel like it's an it indication we're getting older. Like, school just started, but here we are, like, Christmas. Mm-hmm. It's also Festivus Week. Festivus Week. I so, know Festivus is one day, but... Right. Well, the week... This week, I think, is what inspired Festivus. Yes. This is the hustle right. and the bustle. Right. And the moments in which the last one day. had to rain blows upon <laughs> someone else for <laughs> taking a, what was Over it, a doll. A doll. Yeah. If you don't know what we're talking about, you would think we're some crazy people. But check out or Google the Seinfeld Festivus episode. Or no, it actually isn't a Festivus episode. It's the strike. It's it's called the strike. Called but the it, strike. yeah, if you Google Festivus, you're gonna you're gonna find out. But I said episode. You know, I've, I've learned over the last handful of weeks, I have to be very intentional with my words for what I want to come on the other side, as was relayed through the bacon incident. Oh, we're going to revisit the... No, we're not going to revisit it, but <laughs> as we wrap up the year, it's been a learning lesson for me about be very clear yeah. with your words but, what yep. you want people to take away. You know, I brought... So it's Seinfeld the strike is what will tune you into what we're talking about with all this festival stuff. I brought up the toothpaste, uh, toothbrush, toothpaste thing to a different friend group and got the same sort of mixed responses. Toothpaste first, water first. Some people do both. You had, and after. You had more sane toothpaste <laughs> people than not, right? <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. well, it was, it was actually have, pretty split. Yeah, they have a bunch of crazy things. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, uh, but anyway, speaking of celebrating, whether it's wacky holidays or not, whether it's how you partake in sides of bacon with your spouse, uh, what bacon allotment you get at the lunch or dinner table, breakfast table. You, you know you're a fan of Lancaster Connects if you know what I'm talking about. But if you want to celebrate others and it's time to celebrate maybe your staff or your customers, uh, our sponsor for this month and today uh, wraps up their contest. We're going to award their prize, the Taste of Lancaster gift basket at the end of our show. So stay tuned for that. But, you know, Lancaster Gift Box makes gift giving easy. Um, They really focus and do well for people who need to thank their customers. Corporate gifting, um, they can do this nationwide. So whether they need to send a gift basket to somebody across town or across the country, they can do that for you. They've got a really great commitment to supporting local food producers and makers. And Lancaster Cure, I'm sorry, Lancaster Gift Box curates signature gift boxes that capture the local flavors of Lancaster County. And so... If you're somebody that needs to give gifts and you want to give the gift of Lancaster County to others, LancasterGiftBox.com is a place to do that. Let them know you found them on the Lancaster Connect show. uh, Their gifts would be great for Christmas giving. Now, if you, they can ship, but probably we're too late for that. Their store on uh, Queen Street, 300 block of Queen Street would be the place to go. You know what? Pick up a taste of Lancaster box and... Yeah, but giving is in vogue all year round. <laughs> this is true. And so, honestly, though, I mean, if you want to show up differently, you know, there's, I, I've studied business for a long time, practiced business for a long time. And when I say I've studied business, expose myself to other marketing groups and other business owners and see what they do. And I've read stories of like realtors who deliver pumpkin pies mm. in October. Mm. Right. And so, pumpkin whereas all their competition just sends a Christmas greeting card, that's kind of, vague and you can kind of tell they didn't really sign it they do a pumpkin pie at christmas and that's their thing i would remember a pie right i would too (laughs) card okay yeah but but yeah so lancaster gift box to to just give them some little more kudos and love as our sponsor this month you know yeah it's a little late in the game for christmas i don't know that they could even do anything in time for christmas but Maybe in the, maybe you want to get on this yep. and you want to start the the new year right. Maybe you do something in January. Makes sense. Or in February, we love our customers. Or in March, Carolyn thinks I'm, that's a great idea. That's right. Thank you, Carolyn. Or in March, I'm mad about you for March badness. Oh yeah. In April, no joke. You're <laughs> a great customer. May May oh. remember me, box. That's a little, see, I wasn't going to go there and you went, that's a little dark. There. It is dark. Man, it's just, <laughs> got to send Ben to podcast host school. 
I don't know if that's a thing, but we're going to make it. So I might not make it to 24, 2024. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. <laughs> At any rate. <laughs> may the fourth be with you. Yeah, there, there, you we, go. Go. Yeah. there yeah. we go. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. May, the, may the gift box be with you. But anyway, listen, it's always good to uh, appreciate your customers, appreciate your employees. Lancaster Gift Box does a nice job of that. Uh, but uh, in the spirit of giving, and being that it is our last show for the year, I had the team here uh, run the numbers on what we do because you know we do the show we have great guests like we're going to get Kendra on here momentarily um and uh you know she's doing wonderful things with unique Lancaster experiences but we do this show to give back and to help the community so we have charities on we give them the spotlight we give them an episode we create half hour or so of great content that they get to use we put that into reels get that out on social media and that's all great but ultimately, we're still a business that's serving our community. We uh, we we make money in our community, and so the the report, I guess, I guess we the the annual report of what we do here at Gardeners as a result of our customers being um, so trusting in us when they invest in a new sleep system, we take some of that money and we give it back. And so we ran the numbers. And so um, you want to do a drum roll? Is that there? You go. There we go. I like that. There we go. Yep. Love it. So we we decided in 2023 that we'd focus uh, the majority of things on off the streets. So off the streets helps families and people get out of homelessness and really secure housing on a permanent basis. So, Wonderful organization. Yeah. They go through a vetting uh, process to make sure that they're going to be able to get and keep gainful employment get them into a safe home, a home that's going to fit their needs. And then they outfit it with furniture. And so when somebody moves in, they basically have everything they need so they can settle in. They have a really fresh start. So this year in 2023 uh, to date, and I don't know that we have anything else planned Probably not uh, for the rest of the year, although, although I personally have a recliner to donate uh, in my garage, um, the grand total is $34,212 that we've been able to to give back and product to off the streets. And so that comes in the form of twin full and queen mattresses, box springs, bed frames, platform risers, pillows. I think there's some sheets in there. Yeah. Um, there are a lot of things. Yeah. You know, and those are just the things that we inventoried. We had some other samples and things that we donated that would have been off the books, but uh, what is on the books is $34,212. So we're really happy to have, be able to do that for uh, folks here in Lancaster County and wake up happy when they need it the most, you know, I shared, I think I tagged you. We kind of started this path of giving sleep and mattresses to those that need mm -hmm. them 10 years ago. With the bunk bed. With the bunk bed. Yes. I, I think I tagged you. Yes. I? Uh, I think I saw it. Okay. Yeah. Whether you tagged me out of it. Well, you should. I mean, you're kind of a big deal. <laughs> no. uh, the, the, yeah. That I, was a special moment. I can't believe that's 10 years ago, frankly, but um, we donated a set of bunk beds and mattresses to a couple of boys in the city of Lancaster. And the picture we got from mama, uh, was, was just it? awesome. Like super, uh, the kids were just the joy in their faces, like to have bunk beds for Christmas. Yep. Uh, I forget the exact story, but I don't think they had beds or the mattresses were on the floor or something, but yeah. they wanted bunk beds for Christmas and we were able to make that happen. So, yeah, I mean, you think about yeah. it, you know, most, most kids are asking for skateboards and playstations and you know switches right. and i i have boys so i don't know what young girls want barbie dolls taylor swift merchandise taylor swift yeah uh but uh, all these kids wanted was to sleep in that year we had the benefit of i think picking our second gifted high-end mattress from a vendor each mm -hmm. right because that was I the think so yeah by springtime yeah. or carpe diem or, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, one, one or the other so it really was like kind of eye-opening that year mm -hmm. of, of what's really important. And so we kind of took that to heart and carried that forward all these years. And now here we are today. So um, so thank you, Lancaster, for letting us do that. Because without you as our customer, we couldn't. Um, so thank you. No. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, later in the show, we'll award our Lancaster gift box uh, gift basket. And again, they help their clients uh, thrive and create thriving business relationships that boost that retention. And they can help you with custom gifting solutions that are easy to order. They're not just online. They're right on the 300 block of North Queen Street. Um, so they're right downtown in the heart of it all, which 
without too much further ado, that's where our guest is joining us from. Queen Street. Look, look how we tied kind of that in. Thing. I know, like, you know, Ben's still applying for Fodcast <laughs> Post School, and I'm over here just, just Ripping lining it. up the run-ins and the blow-ins and the talk-ins, and I'm not even sure all the language, but man, I can make it look good and sound good. Kendra, welcome to the show. Thank you. I appreciate you. <laughs> so Kendra Wolf, um, Unique Lancaster Experiences. Thanks for being on the show. I can't wait to talk to you about the experiences you provide in Lancaster. Thanks. Uh, you know, you've got a pretty unique story. Um, we just learned in the pre-show that you've been a Lancaster resident now for four years. Is that right? That's correct. Yeah. And you came from New Mexico. And tell us, tell our listeners, you told us earlier, uh, why you came to Lancaster and why you felt it was a great place to to kind of plug roots in. Sure. Yeah. I mean, I, I really traveled as a nomad for many years. I lived in Hawaii, New Mexico, Colorado, Utah. I lived all over the, the U.S. just traveling in my camper, kind of living the dream, as most people would say. But um, ultimately, I knew that what I really wanted to do was mission work. So uh, with, you know, some distant, uh, ex- extended family in close proximity, I decided to move to Lancaster. And I just recently graduated from Lancaster Bible College, uh, which was a huge motivation in coming here. And also worked at Water Street Mission and in the health services clinic, which provides free health care um, for anybody in Lancaster County um, who's at a certain income level. And also worked as a volunteer coordinating assistant at Water Street Mission. That's fantastic. Jeff, what I'm hearing is that Lancaster is above Hawaii on the <laughs> list of cool places. Like Lancaster's up here in Hawaii is like <laughs> at least second, maybe third. Yeah, I want to know how the RV got to Hawaii. Yeah, that's true. I thought that too. <laughs> that's, like, that's a great, maybe, that's, a, that's a story for another day. <laughs> yeah. So just, so I, I love camping and my wife and I are looking to do the, the part-time to full-time RV living mm-hmm. in a handful of years. Um, so what kind of a camper or RV did you have? I actually, have. yeah, I actually had a wild hair and I said, I'm going to sell everything I own. And I bought a 50 year old camper and I gutted it down to the metal and rebuilt it to the point where I could live in it. And then I used services like Work Camper and Work Away so that I could live in mountain resorts in Colorado and stay there for free on the campground, have all my meals provided for while also, you know, doing tour guide work. And so that's kind of how I got started as a tour guide. I would, I lived in Colorado and I would take students who came from places all over the world on tours of Colorado um, while working at the YMCA resort in Granby. Um, So it was a really great experience to just kind of bop around the U.S., kind of figuring out what my skills were. That's cool. Very I, I, cool. Camp and me wants to scrap the notes and just talk to you about <laughs> your life experiences, but that's not what you're here to talk about. Um, so uh, maybe a little bit of an icebreaker question to get into uh, unique Lancaster experiences. Now that you've had four years to digest Lancaster County a little bit, if somebody else was in that position coming in, never been to Lancaster before, where are you taking them first? Like what shows off Lancaster to you? Yeah, that's a great question. You know, that's, I feel like downtown Lancaster, just right next to Central Market is not enough to really experience Lancaster. And that is why I created the electric bicycle tour, because I really wanted to take people to all of my favorite places that we're just not going to be able to do in a walking distance. And so, you know, Franklin and Marshall's uh, Art Museum is really amazing and it's free and open, you know, six days a week. Um, of course, you know, Southern Market is such a hub for all things Lancaster, having 13 different chefs from all these different cultures sharing all of their food is really um, instrumental to telling the story of Lancaster since we are number six on a list of 18 certified welcome cities uh, for welcoming and helping refugees thrive in our community. That's pretty cool. I didn't know that Franklin and Marshall had an art museum. Yeah, it's amazing. No clue. I, yeah, I didn't know that at all. <laughs> Maybe you go. guys should come on the tour. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds it sounds like we should. <laughs> Although I'd probably break the e bike and crash it because I'm just that kind of way. <laughs> You're not going to break the e bike. 
<laughs> I broke a set of stairs this way, Dan. Oh, that God. was a story well, I didn't even get to tell you. Yeah, we'll, we'll leave that for after show. So, so Kendra, um, why did you start Unique Lancaster Experiences and, and what is it? Unique Lancaster Experiences is actually the only certified Black-owned tour agency in the state of Pennsylvania. So um, basically that means a long-winded way of saying I'm the only minority woman who in the entire state of Pennsylvania that does what I do which is to create create activities, create fun things to do, but to do it through the lens of diversity. So what I do is I go to a new place, I explore the landscape, I explore the community, and I say, it looks like this would be a great place for a food tour, or it looks like a great place for a scavenger hunt. Not everybody wants a tour guide. So I create uh, self-guided experiences that I build inside of apps so that people can, you know, explore Lancaster on their own, but also have kind of a local helping them along the way. So I'm only a text away if people need assistance. Um, I'm also a photographer. So, you know, I'd like to take people on tours of Lancaster while also photographing them. And so if they're going to take a picture in front of Central Market, they should know that it's the oldest public market in the United States. Um, and it's been there since 1730, um, structurally designed in 1889. So I think it's really valuable to be able to explore the city and also share the stories of the immigrants, minorities, and also the entrepreneurs who are here. There's so much in Lancaster that is just not offered anywhere else. Having traveled the U.S. extensively and lived all these different places, I have never seen a community like Lancaster that rallies around one another to ensure the success of the entire community. That's really cool. Yeah, I love that. Um, the way that you connect the dots to the history, to the experience. I mean, I guess that's really kind of your secret sauce, isn't it? Yeah, I think that Lancaster makes it very easy to create something that makes you happy. So I, I love working at Water Street, but my problem with being gainfully employed my entire life was that I would show up at a job and try to make things more fun. And they'd be like, no, Kendra, we just want you to do the regular work. That was in the job description. And it was always my um, my goal to create games and initiatives and activities. And I realized, like, I just need to go and do this on my own. I need to, you know, figure out the things that I find fun and I find enjoyable and then do those things. Um, and so now the cool challenge is that to expand this business, I get to link arms with people who have skills that I don't have. Um, I don't have any watercoloring skills or any, um, you know, other skills and different things that other people are amazing at. And not everybody knows how to take their really cool skills and to um, actually put them into a, a format where tourists can actually enjoy it. So I have a few questions. Um, is it you giving these tours? I know some you said some are self-guided. Do you have a, a team of tour guides or is it mostly you get providing the tours? I have a couple of contractors who assist me. I have a couple of photographers who help me and um, some uh, food tour guides who assist me as well. Uh, I'm the only electric bicycle tour guide, but uh, we are slowly growing. That's cool. Uh, yeah. We have a question that uh, just came in from somebody. That Chris will probably put it on the screen in a moment. Do do you offer Lancaster history tours? I do actually. Yeah, I was actually on an international food tour uh, downtown, which does incorporate history of the Green Book. If you've ever seen the TV show Riverdale, they did a whole episode on the Green Book, as well as the movie, the major motion film, the Green Book. Um, so I share Lancaster's contribution to the Underground Railroad and the Green Book on the International Food Tour. Um, but then while I was on that tour, a girl said, you should do a breakfast tour of Lancaster. And I thought, well, that's great. I wonder what how I could make that, you know, a little bit more meaningful. So now we have the uh, Breakfast in History walking tour, which is exactly what it sounds like. <laughs> it's breakfast combined with history all the way from Lancaster's history from the settlement around 1730 up into the 1940s. So what kind of places are on this breakfast tour? I'm assuming there's multiple restaurants or establishments involved? There are, yeah. There's a lot of different businesses that I partner with in order to share these stories. But uh, on a typical breakfast tour, we would usually go to uh, the Central Market. We'll go to Seasons Olive Oil and Vinegar Tap Room. Uh, we'll also go to the Lancaster Beignet, uh, which just celebrated their one-year anniversary. Um, there's uh, Scratch Bakes, uh, which we visit, La, La Dolce Vida, the Courthouse Bakery, uh, Barbaray Bistro and Bakery. 
um, collectively, there's about 40 different downtown businesses that I partner with in order to run all of my different tours and experiences. Gosh, it sounded like 10 pounds worth of breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> Those places that you describe—is there bacon? <laughs> is there bacon? Yeah. Yes, there's definitely bacon, and they're also all my tours are vegan and vegetarian friendly. Okay, so cool. What about gluten? Are they is the gluten friendly? Yeah, actually, the international food tour is gluten free and celiac disease uh, friendly. So even someone who's gluten free can come and join the tours. Kendra has thought of everything. That's bad. <laughs> That's bad. Um. So you touched on Underground Railroad uh, in the Green Book. Can you tell our listeners, watchers, uh, what the Green Book is all about? Absolutely. Yeah. So the Green Book is a nationwide guide that started in 1936 by a man named Victor Hugo Green. He was a postal carrier in New York City, and he worked alongside the United States Travel Bureau to create this book because at the time there were sundown towns. And a sundown town was basically a place where you were not allowed to be a person of color after dark. And so the book, well, although it started in 1936, it was revised every single year up into the 50s. And so as you look around downtown Lancaster and even the outskirts of Amish country, um, you'll also find all these historic buildings. And so Lancaster really cares a lot about the preservation of historic buildings. So there are several uh, physical structures that are actually in these green books that used to be bakeries or barber shops or tourist houses, which were basically the OG Airbnb. It was a place where you could stay, you just had to knock on the door because there's no phone numbers in the book. And people like you and I were willing to put their address in this book so that Hispanics, uh, Asians, African-Americans, all people of minority descent could have a place to stay as it became more popular for minorities to travel. That's really cool. And, you know, it's interesting, interesting tie in. We had uh, last week on the program, we had Danielle Kepperling from um, the Lancaster Preservation Trust, I believe I, I might have mm-hmm. gotten or Preservation Trust of Lancaster, but basically restoring uh, and preserving historic buildings. So it's interesting yeah. that, you know, that ties directly into what you were just talking about there. Yeah, I saw your show and I was really excited to learn about her work. So thanks for sharing that. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, we got cut off. Uh, her, her. I don't know if it was her internet or computer just kind of went out, and we weren't able to get her back in there. Oh, but no. um, so, uh, do you have a tour experience that's kind of number one on the list, like the one or two that that people just love and and is your most popular? I would say right now the most popular is either the International Food Tour or the Lancaster Citywide Scavenger Hunt. Um, the international food tour has been really popular among um, colleges. So Franklin and Marshall, uh, Alvernia College. I just did a tour last weekend with Hack students. They love to bring their international students and even their local students so that they can find new places in the city to uh, come and eat whenever they get into town. Um, of course, Franklin and Marshall students are kind of right on the cusp of uh, downtown. And so it was really cool to see that a lot of them um, don't really come downtown and we really want to make them a a bigger part of the community. Um, But the scavenger hunt is also such a great time, especially around the holidays because it changes every single um, month. I know we were talking about uh, Lancaster gift box and, you know, different ways that they could market their services for St. Patrick's day and for Valentine's day. And that's kind of how the scavenger hunt works. I changed the, the set of missions all throughout the year. And it's a, a citywide hunt for um, different activities that I've, you know, set up around the city with local businesses so that people don't just walk on the sidewalk and look into the business's windows. They actually go inside and actually see what it's all about and hopefully make purchases to support the tourism industry. That's cool. Yeah. So put it, putting a tour together like this international food tour, um, first of all, you get to experience everything in advance, right? Like you have to test the food and, and yeah. learn about the <laughs> restaurants. And so yes. that's a great benefit. <laughs> yeah. yes. how, how long does it take you to put together a tour, like, you know, research and, you know, development of everything? What does that look like? You know, for me, I feel like I have a very untraditional practice. I will think of something while I'm driving down the road and I'll think, wow, that would be a really great idea. And then I'll go online and I'll put it online before I've even created it. And then once somebody books it, then I get to work. <laughs> so. That's how I kind of got started. It's kind of like, you know, putting up a mattress store and putting mattresses online when you don't have anything in the inventory. Well, guess what? Now you don't have a choice. And so, you know, I'm one of those people where 
<laughs> execution is my greatest skill. Um, right now, I'm currently uh, trying to partner with the uh, Lancaster Central Market to do the Central Market experience so that people can actually come to uh, Lancaster to come to Central Market. But instead of, again, just looking around and kind of moseying through the market, they actually have an app that is guiding them through the market so that they can hear the stories. A lot of people don't know that the individual stands used to be auctioned off. And so the stands just went to the person with the most amount of money. And at that time, that was mostly the reason why we had, you know, meat and cheese and vegetable stands, because a lot of the farmers um, with the most amount of land were the people that had these individual stands. Um, but once the city of Lancaster no longer owned that property, they began to create the system of diversity. So now you may be on the list for three, four or five years. Uh, but if your food or your product brings in a level of diversity that we don't have anywhere else in central Pennsylvania, then you get bumped to the top of the list. Similarly, if an African food stand leaves, they replace it with someone on the list who sells African food. If someone from an Asian descent leaves, they replace it with someone else who sells Asian food. And that's how we have acquired this level of diversity in our market that you don't see anywhere else. And I think it's important for people to know those things. That's really cool. I've been to market a number of times. And it's um, if you've been there a bunch and you uh, there's Chef Oliver. We had him on earlier in 2023. Yeah. Um, it, it can be an overwhelming experience. Like, you know, you go in there and there's, I don't know, there's like a hundred vendors or something. It, there's, there's a lot of vendors yeah. and a lot of products and like kind of where do you get started? So having it like mm -hmm. an app based program that can kind of like guide you through that, that seems like it would be very, very cool, uh, for people to have to guide yeah. them through. Absolutely. You got an itch? Let's go yeah. on there. <laughs> uh, sorry, I was doing a lot of hiking this weekend and moving around my leg. Staying very active. sore at the moment. Um, but uh, no, we had uh, another question about um, your scavenger hunts. Um, somebody says, sounds like a lot of fun. Carolyn actually says, sounds like a lot of fun. Uh, what other details can you share about your scavenger hunts? Like, are there different themes? Uh, you said, I think one of them was citywide. So mm -hmm. how does that all work? Yeah, it's a race against the clock. You only have three hours to complete the scavenger hunt. Um, and you basically receive instructions from me and a video from me on, you know, how to get set up. And then we meet at the welcome center uh, right in the center of the city. And then once the missions are released for that specific day, um, it guides you to take, it guides you to different locations around the city, um, whether they be historic sites, statues, or actually inside of local businesses. And um, to submit your, uh, you know, to submit and finalize your missions, you either take a video or a photo or you have to do a text input. Uh, so, for example, um, ideally, you want to end the scavenger hunt at decades. I'm sure you guys are familiar with decades, the bar, restaurant, bowling alley and arcade. Um, but in order for you to play the games inside of the arcade, you obviously need some tokens. Well, the tokens are hidden inside of a lockbox that I've placed downtown. But you can't find that lockbox until you answer the historic question. And of course, you need the code to the lockbox, which is actually a math question, um, which can, is compiled out of a variety of different historically um, put together information about Lancaster. So it's really involved. That's super cool. I like that. It's almost <laughs> like uh, National Treasure. Correct. Yes. <laughs> National Treasure meets Lancaster County history and fun all mm -hmm. through the lens of a scavenger hunt. I love it. Yeah. I mean, I'm yeah, only one person cool. and I really want to be able to expand every possible way that I can. So it's being self-guided. It gives it a lot of benefit for people to do it on their own. I recently hosted a scavenger hunt for Fulton Fink's um, executive team. Um, so we do really short scavenger hunts that people just don't have the full three hours to do the whole thing. Um, then I'll create a custom scavenger hunt for a church, which has a little uh, more uh, less secular uh, questions in it or for a, a corporate group that maybe needs to have something geared towards a bank or an organization. It's really customizable for any group uh, of any size. Yeah, very neat. Very neat. Um, so this this app that you referenced about Lancaster Central Market, um, <laughs> would that be something you create? Is that a skill set that you have? <laughs> Um, I, you know, with AI nowadays doing a lot of the hard work for us, I would say that I do have that skill set, but I do take the easy route. 
Uh, I don't know if you guys are familiar with Discover Lancaster's coffee trail uh, and also their ice cream trail. It's the same uh, business or uh, system that they use to provide those services as well. So, you know, you you pay for the service, but you don't have to do it all in one go. You can come back next week or in six months or, you know, come back at Christmas and finish from where you left off as long as you finish it within the year. Um, everything is saved. And the fun part is that you actually get to taste and earn goodies along the way. So the longer you continue, the more you earn. That's neat. That's really neat. So yeah. booking a tour itself, um, how, how do people find you? I'm, I'm assuming the website is a great place for information and, and booking. Mm-hmm. Is that is that the best way to, to go about it? Yeah, the best way to find my services are on experiencelancasterpa.com. Um, anytime you Google things to do in Lancaster, pretty much year round, because I'm the only year round tour guide in Lancaster City, okay. um, you know, you'll find a variety of my tours through uh, different booking platforms like TripAdvisor, Viator or whomever. Um, but you'll also find the tours of some of my what you would call my competitors on my website and various places as well, because we are really a community. And so I want to work alongside them to help to promote their businesses and services as well. Okay. Yeah, great. We had a question come in about the scavenger hunt costs. And I see as Chris is scrolling through there, you have all the costs listed there. So that's a uh, like a per person cost? That is correct. Yes. Yep. Yep. That's awesome. That's awesome. And then to book one, you just uh, click on it and there it is. You pick a day. Yeah. That's a question I had. Um, it looks like what Friday, Saturday and Sundays are probably the most popular days. It depends on the tour. Yeah. So Tuesdays uh, are usually a scavenger hunt day, which are market days. Um, But anytime someone wants to book a group uh, situation, they can always contact me directly. Um, The only thing that's not per person is actually the Lancaster limousine tour. That's just a customized experience that I offer uh, for groups. Oh, what what what, yeah. what 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 is this limousine tour? <laughs> Why oh, yeah. you all know that's <laughs> yeah. So right there on the main page, if you scroll to the bottom, you'll see the Lancaster limousine experience. Um, usually around the holidays, particularly, we do a Christmas light show where people can book, you know, a group for their family or their friends. They jump in the stretch limousine. I create games. I play the DJ. They BYOB their own drinks, and uh, and we have a great time taking them to Christmas light shows. Um, around Valentine's Day, we do one that includes um, the covered bridges uh, around Lancaster County. A photographer will meet us in the downtown uh, center to take photos of the couples. And there's usually an activity like axe throwing or uh, deer foot to winery thrown in there as well. That's awesome. I, I love this. I love what you're doing because like in it seemingly in every experience, you've incorporated other businesses like, you mm-hmm. know, this limousine tour. Obviously, you don't own the limousine, right? <laughs> you're not you're not driving the limousine. You have another business provide that service. Uh, you're not, you're stopping yes. at multiple businesses. Um, I'm sure the the bike tour is the same thing. You're um, you're probably using a a, a bike service place. Um, I know of uh, I know of Let's Roll. I don't know if that's the mm-hmm. one you use, but um, yeah. th- it's really cool that all of your experiences kind of incorporate all of these other small locally owned owned businesses and services. Yeah, collaboration is uh, is is key, uh, and especially in Lancaster, I I love the collaboration that happens downtown. If if anyone's watching this and they're a local business in the city, uh, every single month we actually meet downtown at the Ware Center, um, and all of the local merchants downtown will meet. Um, sometimes the mayor is there to give out awards on different occasions, but they always have a speaker come and share something insightful or helpful to the business community. Um, and everyone gets a chance to introduce themselves. And so you have a moment to stand in front of every local business owner in downtown and say, hi, my name is Kendra and I create fun things to do. Um, that way you can introduce yourself. And that's the best way to figure out who you want to collaborate with and how to support our local business community. Yeah, that's so cool. And you're, you know, speaking of collaboration, you're, I'm sure you'll be okay with this to give a little plug to the candy factory. Mm-hmm. You're in a collaborative workspace right now. What What do you like about being there at the Candy Factory? Oh, the Candy Factory is such a fun place. It is a co-working space, but it's also a social club. It's six stories tall, so there's plenty of space. the The membership that I have is, you know, just for someone who has a small business. I have uh, thousands of square feet of space that I can choose to work from um, within our space. And if you're a creator, or if you're going into 2024 and thinking. Uh, wow, these guys do a really good job. I could probably do a better podcast than them. Then, you know, definitely come to the Candy Factory and 
Um, we have an entire podcast room. We have an entire um, a photography studio set up. Every space that you need as a creator, they have it here. We have a meditation room. Um, and the people here are generally just so kind. So it's very easy to make friends here. Um, and there's always an activity going on. The Six Floor Social Club in and of itself uh, there's always parties and events and fun activities going on, most of which are family friendly. So feel free to bring your kids. Yeah, I've cool. been in the sh- in the sixth floor. What do you call it? The social quarters? Is that yeah. it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's very cool space. It is very cool space. If you need uh, if you need a scavenger hunt created for your company and then a place <laughs> to go wrap it up and celebrate who won and who mm-hmm. found the magic key and the you know <laughs> unlock like- color. And that's the place to go. And Kendra can be the one to create that scavenger hunt for you. Definitely. Um, so what's next for you in 2024? What are you looking to uh, level up or what are you looking to expand? Are you looking to, like, do you still have that camper, by the way? <laughs> I got rid of my camper and my motorcycle, but now I have a 92 Dodge conversion van that is kind of my my mini version of, of fun. Okay. So I was, I was um, just... Wondering if the camper might make its way into an experience somehow. Like, go, go, <laughs> in, go watch a... You know, a harvest moon in a Lancaster <laughs> cornfield or something. Uh, but what's twenty? What does twenty twenty four hold for you? Yeah, thanks for asking. Uh, you know, last year I was named Lancaster's Woman of Achievement by the Pennsylvania House of Representatives and the YWCA. Congratulations! Uh, thank you. Well deserved. Um, and I and I declared on the stage, uh, giving my speech, that I would get my um, LTA pilot license to become a hot air balloon pilot, um, and that is something I really want to continue pursuing. Uh, as well as just getting my master's degree from a um, HBCU college. That's that's so cool. Very cool. So you're like not busy at all. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Binge not watch at all. a lot of Netflix, <laughs> you know, spend a lot of time on social media. Yeah, sure. Pointless <laughs> argument. It's, yeah, that's cool. So the um so what what would your master's degree be in? I'm really interested, as you can imagine, in the study of um, politics and history and uh, and race and equality. And so right now, the Susquehanna National Heritage Area recently gave um, myself and my business and a team of my uh, researchers a grant to do research on the Underground Railroad in Columbia. Um, so soon there will be a new tour coming to Columbia that will actually take people on a physical walk uh, to some historic sites that relate to that history. Um, so I really want to continue doing history and um, just doing work that helps elevate equality in our country. Very cool. That's mm-hmm. great. Very cool. And then, obviously, the <laughs> hot air balloon license. <laughs> what, what kind of a license did you say? Uh, it's was? called Lighter Than Air, L- LTA. Okay. Oh, okay. That makes sense. I was yeah. thinking like land to air. <laughs> That's, that's a good one. I too. guess that's what you always want with your pilot. <laughs> yes, you always want to start on land, get in the air, get back. In that case, it would be an yes. L-T-A-L or an <laughs> L-T-A-T-L license. Yeah. Yes. yeah. So obviously that goes without saying. You would incorporate some hot air balloon tours. Mm-hmm. Uh, what's that first tour look like? What stops would... Because uh, you're going to make it happen. We obviously can tell you're a person that, as you said, you execute and you take <laughs> action. What's uh, Can you give a little glimpse of what that tour might look like? You know, as, as someone who studied the Bible um, academically, I felt like I've always wanted to do some um, some uh, premarital counseling and then marry people in the sky. So my ultimate goal, hopefully, <laughs> is to is to marry people in the air. Those who are adventurous enough to take it there. That's that's a new one. I've not <laughs> I've not heard anyone ever try that or do it or anything. That's yeah. I mean, I thought. Unique, right? I thought you would yeah. maybe do something like along the Susquehanna River <laughs> or Amish country or east towards Philadelphia, but they're totally original idea. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's very, that's very cool. Love it. My goal. That's very cool. Yeah. And I guess if like somebody has any objections, you just throw them <laughs> out. <of> the- <laughs> <laughs> or if the groom's got cold feet, it's like, oh, yeah. you ain't leaving now. Right. Yeah, that's that's the ultimate. Can't leave at the altar, right? Yeah, you're yeah. not. You're not leaving that. I mean, I guess parachute. I don't know. That's, that would be. Have pretty you rough. ever been in a hot air balloon before? I have. Yeah. You have? Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, Lindsay and I did that probably like ten years ago. 
uh, started in Burton Hand and ended up in an Amish farm. And it was it was super cool. Like when it landed, there was a you know it was middle of an Amish farm, and the farmer came, and all the little kids came, and like they were helping get the balloon, you know, uh, folded up. It was really cool. We got some really cool pictures. That's amazing. Yeah, love that. Yep. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not sure. It, I don't mind heights, but I just it's I don't know. It it wasn't it wasn't bad. Like it's like anything else, you, like a roller coaster or whatever. Like you go up and you're you're kind of mm-hmm. maybe nervous, and you get to the top, you get down, and then you don't think about it. Like you get a little bit off the ground, and you're kind of like, eh, but then the higher you go, it really doesn't matter. Like you reach 20 feet, you fall. It didn't matter if it's 20 feet or 100. Yeah. Years. Whatever, but no, it was it was it was totally cool, and I felt totally safe. Yeah. Amazing, cool. Put it on your Christmas Very list. Cool. There you go. Yeah, I like it. Well, I mean, that's the thing. Like, this is why we get to do the show. You get to share all the cool, fun things you're doing. Yes, it's the holidays. Uh, I have yet to start my holiday shopping, so maybe who knows? <laughs> uh, I might hit your website up for something for my wife and I. There you do. go. But, there you go. Um, there are gift but, cards on uh, my website, so yeah, exactly. You just can get it in. Limousine See, tour. and for everybody that says you shouldn't do a live video podcast, here's exactly why you do it: because mm. this show would air later, and it might be too late for people to get their stuff. True. It's That's always true. nice to express what your guests are doing in real time. I like that. Absolutely. And, uh, <clears throat> but no, in all seriousness, you know, if if your Christmas uh, Christmas shopping has ended and concluded, put put a note in your phone, put a note in your calendar. That you know, maybe next year, or go get that gift card now and save it till next year, mm. and you're way ahead of the mm. game. Um, you know, yeah. I mean, do more experiences. We joked that we joked early on in the show about Festivus, and the whole root of Festivus was about the consumerism and the materialism of a holiday. Mm-hmm. The, the cool thing you're doing is you're bringing people together. Yes, mm-hmm. you're a business. Yes, you're making money. Uh, everybody gets that, but you bring people together in a fun way where they get to connect. And I love the photography angle. I wanted to comment on that earlier that not only do you bring people together, but then you capture the moment, yeah. which that's yeah. a fun, that's a fun aspect of what you do. Uh, any, has there been any special moments that you've been able to capture? You know, a lot of people contact me to photograph their uh, proposal. And so they think that they're just taking, um, that their boyfriend is taking them on a photo shoot, which seems odd. <laughs> you know, and then they and then they propose and they help, you know, I help them plan the perfect space and the perfect moment to do the proposal. Um, five different locations. So I will photograph in uh, at sunset in Columbia, right there on the river or in Conestoga, uh, which is a hike. I know you mentioned that you like hiking. Um, so at the Overlook near Conestoga. I like hiking to go find a place to hunt. Okay. <laughs> that might change some people's opinions of my version of hiking, but uh, I don't like hiking for the aspect of hiking. I like okay. hunting for the sport. I like hiking for the sport hunting part of it. I'll That's play along. I like, I like hiking. <laughs> yeah. So if people like hiking, then I'll take them on a hiking. Uh, I'll take them on a hiking tour photo shoot. We'll go down to Conestoga near Peckway and go to the Overlook or We'll go to Linnitz on the effort to Linnitz Rail Trail if they want to jump on bikes. I'll photograph them on bikes. Uh, we'll also go to, uh, what other locations do we go to? Yeah, down, of course, downtown and then also Lancaster uh, con- Lancaster County uh, Park. So if they want a little, something more country, a little bit more historic, uh, then I'll take them to the Garden of Five Senses and the historic mm-hmm. Rockford at Lancaster County Park. That's cool. Kendra, you've got a fan. Um Betsy David Heiser Shank from Acorn Acres uh, loves your energy. And thank you. Says everybody wants to be around you, so that's oh, cool. Thank you. That's cool. Uh, I think we're ready for we uh, connection cocktail. A yeah. uh, few questions to get to know. Ken- I mean, I feel like you know we we know Kendra now. Like, yeah, he's <laughs> a lot, <laughs> yes, but it's here on the notes and on the screens. That's so right. Yes, well, we, do it. Yeah. <laughs> so I, oh my gosh, th- this is going to be an interesting question. I mean. Okay. We know your work ethic, but can you describe your work ethic in one word? Put you, putting you on the spot. In one word. Um, that's a that's a tricky one. Let's come back to that one. <laughs> yep, little pass, pass. All right. All right. This one's going to be hard because I, I, I'll be interested to see how you play this one, okay. given your business and what you do. Because okay. you'll you will see if you go the diplomatic route or if you just go right to. Uh-huh. I know what you're going to say. What's your favorite dinner spot in Lancaster? My favorite dinner spot in Lancaster is actually a brand new place that opened up about four days ago. 
It's called Dio Fusion. And if you've ever been to Himalayan uh, curry and grill, then yeah. that's their new little sister spot right there in Il Plaza across from Vince Park. So it's just tucked Ooh. away in there. It's kind of like the Chipotle of Nepali food, but actually really good. <laughs> so I'm really enjoying that place thus far. Uh, and how did you say it? Dio? Dio, yes. Dio. Okay. Oh, well, I, yeah. I see it. I just want to make sure I'm saying it right. Yes. Wow. They just so opened. That, so uh, I love it. I love it. So, yeah, I mean, Himalayan is a great place. Love mm-hmm. that. Um, really? I don't. Do you have time for sports and following sports teams? Is there a sports team that you follow? <laughs> yeah. Is there a sports team that I follow? I like disc golf. Um, okay. if you consider that a sport, um, I don't really. Yeah. I used to play sports as a child. I grew up in East Tennessee uh, originally, so I played everything from cheerleading to football to yep. volleyball and basketball. But as an adult, I've really just gotten away from sports. <laughs> but I have it's a lot a- of respect for the game. I, I'm i a member at Spook Gym. If you ever see me there, wave me down. Um, I really enjoy watching all the kids play basketball. And it's one of those things that's like, I'm working out. I'm, I kind of want to go home and just quit my workout. But then you see these really inspiring kids in wheelchairs playing basketball. Mm at Spooky Nook. And you you can't give up after that. Like you have no excuse, but to keep working hard. So I really respect uh, the people at Spooky Nook and the variety of different ways they've found to include everybody. That's, yeah, that's fantastic. Wonderful. Yeah. Wonderful. Well, Kendra, this has been a lot of fun. Certainly one of our more unique guests for the year. And no, no coincidence that you offer unique Lancaster experiences. So uh, if you're looking for something fun to do, something unique to give, somebody unique and passionate. That was the word people chimed in with yeah, about just, your work ethic that yeah. is passionate. Thank you. So, um, you know, if you're looking to connect with Kendra, obviously somebody who's uh, committed to our area, depositing a lot of good into our area, certainly check out what she's doing. Unique Lancaster experiences. I'm sorry, experience Lancaster PA.com. Thank That's you. The name of your company, but your website, experiencelancasterpa.com. Uh, check out everything Kendra's doing there. We've got her information in the show notes. Uh, call, message, email, DM on social media, however you want to connect. I'm sure she'll be happy to make that connection with you. Kendra, thank you for stopping by and giving us your time. And we hope maybe we can like somehow like put a Starlink or something in that hot air balloon in the summer and uh, <laughs> do, a, do a show from there. Well, you know, go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead. Oh, I, yes. I was going to say, I would love to be the pilot of your first hot air balloon ride. So if you, <laughs> you know, if you decide right. you want a brand new pilot, <laughs> ushering I you, want you to get your air. license. I want you to get your license on your schedule or sooner. I'm not sure that I'll be the first guess. <laughs> Maybe Ben can. He's, he's yeah. saying he doesn't trust you. You know, That's no, I just don't like. know that I'll, I, I just don't know that I'll enjoy it. I, I don't know. You know what we should do, though? We, we, we were, brainstorming ideas for a, for a company, get together, a party, whatever. Ah, the, the limousine might be a cool idea. That there would be go. cool. Yeah. That yeah. Stop experience. off at the, you know, do some axe throwing, whatever. Mm-hmm. I, I think you'll be hearing from us. That might be cool. I appreciate you guys. Thanks for having me on. Thank yeah. you, Kendra. Thanks. Good to see Thank you. you. Yeah. Well, that was a lot of fun. <laughs> so many things going on. I don't know, that's so cool. It really is. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and as we said, Kendra's there uh, on Queen Street in that area of collaboration, you know, Candy Factory, a great collaborative space. Uh, our sponsor this month, Lancaster Gift Box, you know, their their business is about collaboration, really, because they uh, aggregate and bring forth and maybe create exposure and opportunity for other businesses right in Lancaster and put together these really cool baskets for gifts, corporate gifting, retention, uh, making people happy if there was a little mistake and you need to send something nice. Uh, they do all kinds of really great uh, gift baskets. You don't just have to look at them online. They're right downtown in the 300 block of North Queen Street. You know, and uh, they make they have handmade soaps, coffee beans, you know, fresh cheese, adorable greeting cards, all of this finest selection of things you may give, they can bundle it up. I'm sure they could take your ideas too uh, if you really wanted to put a big program together. Corporate gifting is their thing. 
one off is their thing, Pr- pretty much anything in between they can do. Check them out there this month's sponsor. And we're going to award their gift basket, the Taste of Lancaster gift basket here in a few minutes. But check them out, LancasterGiftBox.com. They're a great asset to our community. And uh, every gift that you buy uh, goes back to the Lancaster Farmland Trust. So they don't just, uh, as we like to say, we don't just take from our community. Mm-hmm. We like to give back. That's why we do the show. On that note, as I said, we donated $34,000 worth of beds to uh, off the streets but we did we did a little bit else for companies like like gifts that give hope girls on the run Claire house there was a handful of others um you know around two thousand bucks throughout the year too but we just you know kind of the beginning of the year as uh January 1 of this year came around and uh, Q4 last year we kind of took a focus on off the streets just mm-hmm. because of what we do and we know what that power of a great night's sleep can do for people so the show will continue to support great people, great charities here in Lancaster. Should we spin the wheel for the for the likes to give back prize, or do we want to do that after Sleep Better Tip? Well, uh, let's do the Sleep Better Tip. Do you have your testimony? I do have a testimonial. Good little good little homework there. My Sleep Better Tip is that sometimes your mattress needs uh, other things around it to really help you sleep well, and so. Uh, I was at my friend's cabin this weekend, and he has a very nice cabin, very nice uh, loft for all of his friends and buddies to to sleep in, like a woods cabin you might think of, right? Well, the mattresses are great, the beds are great, but sometimes what can help out a mattress is what's underneath it. Maybe a new foundation box frame, maybe a new bed frame, uh, you know, maybe a topper could give you a little better sleep experience. It's more than just the mattress. There's it is a whole system. There are parts and pieces. Uh, maybe you have a nice mattress, but it's kind of feels like it's sloping into the middle or off the one side, uh, and you just got it. So you might look at what, what's underneath it, what's supporting it. Um, those are all things to consider. We talk about stuff like that in our book, along with sleep tips and sleep hygiene and sleep habits and and routines you can create. So if you want all kind of information around the topic of sleep, we'll send you the book, Sleep Better. You get it at gardenersmattressandmore.com slash sleep dash better. Very nice. Very nice. You know, sometimes you don't have to do homework. The testimonials come to you in the mail. Just drop them in your hand. And that's what we got here. Handwritten testimonial here from Marcy. Recently uh, got a new mattress from us. Uh, Just a couple notes here. Uh, She said the delivery crew, they were very efficient and courteous. They were in and out without much fanfare. So that's that's good. Um, And... uh, she also goes on to say uh, that they've been mattress customers at Gardner's since way back. Um, we dealt with Mr. Gardner originally. So uh, she's referencing Jim Gardner, uh, who started uh, Gardner's, well, at then Gardner's Bedrooms <laughs> in 1990. And here we are 33 years later, uh, still impacting people's lives with a new mattress, helping them wake up happy every morning. So um, we continue the legacy of Great customer service yep. that Jim Gardner started way back when. So thank you, Marcy, for being a customer. Thank you. Sending that in to us. We love all of our customers. We do. We do. And Betsy, thank you. Yes, uh, we donated to Acorn Acres. Mm-hmm. Um, you do wonderful things for those little woodland creatures. And we learned that a ground pig... Is that right? Oh, a groundhog. Groundhog is the same whistle thing pig. as a whistle pig, is the same thing as a woodchuck. As a woodchuck, as the same thing as like there's there's multiple other words. Yeah, they can have like. a lot of different things. I'm, I'm sure Betsy thing. can help us out. Yeah. But uh, <clears throat> yeah, I mean, listen, we we will donate to causes that uh, help our community and make sense. You know, as a business, sometimes you have to pick and choose. And, um, you know, it's sometimes we have to say no, but we almost always try to find a way to say yes in some form or fashion. And so um, that's why we do the show to help out our community it really is. Uh, somebody asked, I saw in the comments about the food drawing and I'm a little embarrassed. We forgot to line that up. So we will have to do that drawing in the new year. Yeah. I think the second show of the new year. Yeah. We'll do we'll that. Do that. <clears throat> yep. Uh, the reason being not to pull anything, um, when people come in for those kinds of contests, we just have you fill out uh, like a contest slip, but then we drop your ticket and we notate your ticket numbers on your contest slip. It's just too much to execute here in real time. So when we did it last time, 
I drew the thing on video, drew the drew the ticket number, and then we matched that ticket number up with the entrance name and information that we had on file. I just can't execute that right now. And it's completely my fault. I just forgot to, uh, to do it. And Carolyn, can more tickets be earned? 100%. Yeah, we'll keep that open. Actually, that's a good thing. We'll keep it open throughout the holidays. Yeah, through the through the end of the year. Yeah, we'll extend it because we just we we just I, I flubbed. I forgot to forgot to do it. Hey, my human. bad. Yep. Yeah. But extra extra opportunities to win. So that's that. But the winning has concluded. The opportunity for winning yes. has concluded for the Lancaster gift box. Taste of Lancaster. They have a fantastic sponsor. Ton of entries. Great number of I think. I think the most entries so far of a yeah of a contest we've done. Yeah. That, so that was up against <laughs> the Whiff Roasters gift basket from October, yeah. and then we thought we had a bunch more. You know, the lesson here is these contests are growing, and our mm-hmm. customers like them, mm-hmm. and our Lancaster Connects audience loves it. So we started with uh, Whiff Roasters, and then Diamond Earrings, mm-hmm. and then Taste of Lancaster gift basket. Food wins over everything. Food wins, and, and all this bad food you're going to have to work off with January sponsor. Universal Athletic Club. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. So yeah. you'll be seeing in the new year what they have to offer in their contest. Um, you see how you do that transition? It's it's, it's like pro, yeah. pro level, yeah. expert, whatever. There's so at any rate, um, yes, this contest, though, I think we're ready to announce. Yeah, let's get that prize later going. Give it a spin. Look, I love when the prize later wheel is full. I like it. it has a nice look to it. Uh, there we go. There it's flying. Oh gosh, that's kind of trippy. Oh, yeah, it's like yeah. hypnotizes you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Nicole Mass, congratulations. We, we will reach out to Nicole, let her know that she's won and how to pick up her prize. Thank you uh, to everyone who entered. Thank you to Nicole for being part of the contest. And hey, we'll announce next month's concert or concert contest next show. On the 1st of January, and uh, another chance to enter and win a great prize. Concerts. Concerts. Wow, I don't know. know. Gosh. What, what what was planned while I was away this weekend? <laughs> yes. Anyway, um, <laughs> congratulations to Nicole Mast on winning the Taste of Lancaster gift basket. Like Ben said, we'll make the connections and uh, let you know. I think the only other thing we have to mention is it's year-end. Um you know, which in the business world means like get rid of the inventory because mm-hmm. the big mm-hmm. bad tax man comes mm-hmm. and taxes you on it and nobody likes to pay taxes. Um, and so we have a really great clearance promotion going on right now on a lot of different things. Um, it's kind of like a little scavenger hunt, if you will, to find that deepest discount of up to 75% off of our regular everyday prices. And so uh, really great savings. Uh, if you have some flexibility on what you're looking for, so maybe it's a great time to upgate, upgrade, upgate. Yes, the the words are tough. (laughs) (laughs) Words are tough, Mister Podcast Graduate Guy. Right. Anyway, uh, if it's time to upgrade your guest bedroom mattress, uh, we've got some fantastic Mm -hmm. deals there. Uh, you know, if your teenagers have been hard to shop for this year and they have just about anything they could ever want, but they wake up grumpy, you might consider a new mattress for their bedroom. Uh, so we have lots of great deals on that. We've got some wonderful King mattresses that you would get at a great price. So sizes, budgets, we've got it all. We'd love for you to get it at a discount rather than paying tax on it come January 1 when that whole mind-numbing process of taxes begins. Um, so check that out, gardenersmattressandmore.com slash sales. All the details are there. Betsy, same to you. Yeah, Merry have Christmas. Safe, relaxing. Merry Christmas. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's next Monday. It's next Monday. It's Monday. Hopefully, your foot, we got a lot of football between now and then. Hopefully, your team wins. I'm hoping my team wins. We hopefully can get our act together with the Eagles. We have a Christmas Day game, so I have to. Oh, really? Yeah, so I, we either have to, like, have fixed all of our problems or I have to, like, sedate myself with Christmas, with, like, put some sedation medicine in with a Christmas ham. Is that a Monday? So I'm not a like a Monday night game? Christmas Day. Yeah, it's, well, there's. I think there's three games oh, Christmas Day. Okay. I think. Well, we have the Giants mm. at four o'clock. So no I have problem. So I have to be on my good behavior because it's Christmas Day. I can't like, <laughs> you know, baby Jesus' birthday. I can't be upset. That was, Christmas Day. Not a good look. So <laughs> at any rate, Merry Christmas to you all. 
Have a wonderful holiday season and a happy new year. I'll see you next year on Lancaster Connects.